Hello fellow gearheaders, Ron here of Ron's Muscle Car Garage. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Today I want to talk about torque converters. I'm right in the midst of putting a torque converter in the 69 Camaro, so let's get into it, find out what it's all about. Those of you who have followed me know that I'm in the midst of putting my 69 car back together. I finished off my 489 engine and now it's time to come up with a good converter to finish off the package. Understand that the torque converter is extremely important for an automatic transmission car. If you're not familiar with what a converter does, just briefly, I'll just kind of touch upon it, but it basically lets your engine get into its optimal RPM range so you have the maximum potential to pull that car down the road or on the track. So I have a converter here that was in my 67 car. It's an eight inch converter. I'll show it to you right here, real small. Uh, it's a cone. Problem is, it's no longer good for my 67 because I built an engine for that that puts out too much torque, too much horsepower for this converter. Now, let me go back to the 69 car. The 69 car makes less power. So in contacting Cone Engineering, they mentioned that we could go through my eight inch converter, my old eight inch from the 67 car, and we could actually build a really good converter for this 489 engine for the street. And that's what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna send this down to Cone, they're gonna open it up and they're gonna put in the proper parts to make this engine perform optimally with the weight of the car. And the weight of the car is, we haven't weighed it yet, but it's probably around 2,900 without me in it. And all that's gonna come into factor when they uh, do their work down there. Now, I wanna say this, that early on, and when I, because I've been doing this for over 40 years, but early on, I didn't have the experience, didn't have the knowledge, and didn't have the funds, actually, either, to be able to put together a uh, correct torque converter for my package at the time. And what I mean by that is that if you have the funds and you can dyno your engine, dyno and have a dyno sheet, you now have what it takes to be able to put together a ballpark, and I say a ballpark because it, it's not gonna be perfectly spot on the first try, but you can have a converter built for that engine uh, spec that you have off the dyno. And that's what I have. I have dyno this engine and made a uh, uh, 709.9 horse, I think, or 709.8, something like that, almost 710 horsepower. But now I can send my converter down to Cone, have them open it up, look at the, um, you know, the data on the dyno sheet, and then put together a pretty close converter. One of the things I have found in the past, because I didn't have the funds to go on a dyno, that's 600 bucks these days to have that done in itself, and I didn't have the funds to really have a converter built, because it will be a little more expensive for you if you do it this way. So I would just buy a shelf converter. And early on, I thought advertised uh, stall on the converter, which is what that RPM range I mentioned would might be. I said would be, but it's might be, because they're not all the same. Never really matched up. Now, I've run small blocks and I've run big blocks. And if your engine isn't making a lot of horsepower and a lot of torque, a converter that might say advertise at 4,500 RPM may not really net 4,500 RPM with its flash point. In other words, flash point is whenever the RPM goes up on takeoff and it reaches a point where it grabs the engine and, and then you go down the track. Now, if it falls short of your RPM range, you will lose performance because you're gonna dog the engine. It's gonna bog out. So you have to find that optimal range. This car, for instance, when it leaves the line at the track, if it flashes to 6130, 6130 RPM, boom, that's right in there. It's pulling strong, good 60 foot, really a, you know, you can tell there's no bog, you know, it's pulling hard. Uh, one, two, three flat, 60 foot with a power glide. That's pretty good with a power glide for what this car runs. Runs in the 870 range. Could, it's gonna be in the 860s this time because we've now changed the engines, a little more horsepower, a little more torque. We know that on paper, low 860s. But anyway, you, you've got this, this initial burst where boom, it flashes up there. So that's what flash means. So you may think you're getting a converter that's going to flash what you might want it to be 
but it really doesn't because your engine doesn't have the horsepower to be able to make it get there. So that's why we do this with a, uh, with a dyno sheet. That's why we actually go to the professionals, have them open it up and put it together correctly. So this is the right way to do it, but there again, it, it can be rather costly. So if you don't have the funds to do that, I would suggest this. If you're gonna buy a converter, make sure you buy more stall than what you think you're going to need. You can look at it this way. If you have a 500 horsepower engine, you're not gonna get 4,500 stall uh, from a converter off the shelf. In my opinion, I don't think that's gonna happen. So I would probably opt for something more in the higher range, like 5,500, if you're trying to get along around 4,000. Because it's just this way, you don't have the horsepower to be able to make that converter really work the way it is advertised as a, ch a shelf item. I hope that makes sense. But uh, I just want to talk about this. Um, I'm excited to get this car back together. Uh, it's winter time here in Michigan. Uh, this would be the time I really need to work on it. I was just on the phone last night with a friend of mine and he had mentioned that probably want to get that converter down to Cone so they can get on it because a lot of the drag racers are going to be thrashing here towards the end of winter to get ready for summer. Uh, although I'm not in a huge rush, I thought, well, yeah, he's right. I probably should send it down there uh, and get it worked on. <clears throat> Let me say something about the 67 here. Now, as I mentioned, I had the 8 inch in there. Uh, when I had this converter built, which I had this one brand new because, of course, I took the uh, 8 inch out, Cone looked over the numbers and realized that my 8 inch was too small. So I had to go to a 9 inch, so only an inch larger. And uh, they built a really good converter. Now the cost on that was $1,250. I don't know what it's going to run for this 8 inch to be gone through, but I have now the core and that'll make it cheaper. But I'm going to guess it's probably going to be in around the 400 to 500 range to have this built for my 69 car. But looking at this, why did they go to a 9 inch? Well, my engine uh, used to make 875 horsepower. Now it's 906 at 6,900 RPM. Same car, different engine build, different. Basically what we did, just to let you know too, we didn't really change anything. All we did was change the degreeing of the cam. Rather than advancing it on the hit, we left it straight up. That made all the difference from 875 to 906. Unbelievable, I, I'm shocked about that. But but the guy that uh, helped me with this engine, getting this on the dyno, he's the dyno operator at a place called Performance Engineering. He suggested we go that way because this engine is a big torque monster and we wouldn't need that extra three degrees advance to, to get it to have more torque off the line. It made a huge difference, you guys. I really appreciate him for pointing that out. But anyway, getting back to the converter, the, the old converter is too small to be able to build it properly for this engine and have any room to change it. So in other words, if it were not flashing properly, they couldn't go back into it and change whatever it is, they change the fins in there and the angles and all of that, that they need to do wouldn't be good. They would not be able to do it. So they suggested I go with a nine inch and that gives me that um, ability to have them go back in and tweak a few things if necessary. Now I do have data acquisition on this car, so I do measure RPM, and that's why I know 6130 is, is optimal for the takeoff with this, with me in it, my weight, everything. It's 20, 2885, by the way, if, if you're interested to know. And that's, once again, with me in the car with my gear on. So, um, and now that it's making quite a bit more horsepower, uh, we're, we're hoping that uh, that new converter will be close you know, because they just built it, will be close right out of the gate. But if it's off a little bit, I can send it back down to them and they can go back inside. They basically cut it open and they rebuild it again. But they know now that where, where it did perform with this package, now they know what they can do to make it perform even better or more accurate, accurately. So I hope that makes sense. I'm just trying to uh, cover as much as I can. If you guys have any questions or comments about converters, I'm not an expert at them, but I've been at it long enough to where I've had a lot of them and I've known what has worked and what has not worked. And maybe I can help you answer your questions so for, your, for, your, for your package, for your combo. I don't know. Give it a try. Let me know what you got. I'm going to need a few, inf a, a, a few uh, 
data points like your weight of your car, horsepower, torque, those kind of things, and maybe I can help you. Maybe I can answer uh, uh, the needs that you might have for a converter off the shelf, okay? Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this uh, was helpful. And until next time, like I always say, keep on working on them because they're never done.